Neighborhood Network, in partnership with the League of Women Voters of New York State and the Amsterdam News, presents Race to Represent, an MNN election initiative. I'm Eleanor Tatum, publisher and editor-in-chief of the New York Amsterdam News. Today, we are bringing you a debate among the candidates for State Assembly in District 69. The district covers Manhattan Valley, Morningside Heights, and the Upper West Side. There are 150 seats in the Assembly. All of them are up for election this year. The New York State primaries will be held on Thursday, September 13th. The Democratic candidates for the New York State Assembly District 69 joining us today are Daniel O'Donnell and Ruben Vargas. Welcome, candidates, and thank you for being here. My first question goes to Mr. O'Donnell. How would you describe, for those who may not know it particularly well, what is the job of the State Assembly member, and how do you describe the major responsibilities? Um, I would say the job is divided into two parts. The first part is the local part. So you have an office uh, in the neighborhood where people can come and get constituent services, people who are facing evictions, people who are subject to elderly abuse, a variety of things, they come to my office. We have a full-time staff there to assist them. Um, and I do this job full-time, so I'm in that office on a daily basis. The other half of the job is to go to Albany, the state capital, and to write and pass legislation. And th those two different parts of the job require different skill sets. Um, and so you have to write legislation and then find a way to get it passed. Mr. Vargas, are you in agreement with Mr. O'Donnell? And what do you believe are the most important aspects of being an assembly member? Yes, uh, I do agree with Mr. O'Donnell to uh, references, but I also agree there is a voice of the community and it's a fighter for the community also in the, in the same way that the community come to you, but sometimes the community may have problem and we, the assembly member or the le legislator, I think they will also have the to ha need to have the ability to foresee problem and prevent problem from happening. No waiting for problem to happen and to come and being the hero. I like also include being able to foresee problem, like tenants problems, a problem like uh, many, many, which is elected official had to deal with. Thank Ms you. Mr. Vargas, what makes you the right choice to fill a seat over an incumbent assembly member, uh, Mr. O'Donnell? Um, have you held office before, been, a com uh, been on the community board? Um, what have been your accomplishments and what are you most proud of that would display your ability to be a successful assembly member? Great question. I, I had been for more than 20 years, in 1996, I had ran for office, unelected, but I had always won. I won all of the elections. Winning is different, depend on the person, person, uh, what kind of person it is, or what kind of per person intention. Winning to me is achieving an objective. To others being elected, I've never been elected. However, I have only won because I have always achieved my objective. The objective of bringing about issues to the people, to the forefront of the community, that other than that would have never been. The objective of bringing, uh, of having an elected official is getting out of the desk and out to shake hands with the people. Uh, the objective and um, reminding elected officials, the people are not to be taken for granted, that the people are to be, they're served and they, we gotta, they got to go out and say hi to the people and shake hands and listen to the people from outside the office. So are you seeking to, to win the election and sit in the office, or are you seeking to get the issues out? The, my objective, as I say, winning is not only being elected, it's achieving an objective. objective. Running for office right now for state assembly, I'm bringing about the two more, is more progressive, or the two more progressive issues that I would have never been brought to the front or to here. To, other than that, me running for office, because I believe I have the God-given ability to foresee problems, to foresee, foresee how to help society, to improve the well-being of society in all terms, and all of the meaning of the, the good society, organized society. 
Okay, thank you, Mr. Vargas. Um, Mr. O'Donnell, you are the incumbent. Why should people vote for you again on primary day? And what have been the two or three accomplishments you are most proud of? And what has been your major disappointment? Um, uh, I run a full-time office. I do the job full-time. I provide constituent service to thousands of people every single year. Um, in terms of my legislative accomplishments, I'm currently the chair of the Arts Committee. I was previously chair of the Corrections Committee, where I toured 38 prisons in the state of New York. Um, in terms of legislation, I passed the Marriage Equality Act. I passed the Dignity for All Students Act, which is the anti-bullying bill, which is the first time that transgender people were written into state law. Um, and I am a fighter, and I am bold. And when uh, an issue is in put in front of me, um, I don't take no for an answer. Um, my greatest disappointment is not getting more done on criminal justice reform. We need to change the rules of discovery. We need to change cash bail. We need to change solitary confinement. All those things are things that I have written and proposed, and I have not yet succeeded in making the changes that I think are necessary. What has been the holdup in getting those things done? Well, it's a, a variety of things. One is uh, the difficult thing about being a legislator is that the de devil's in the details. So how do you change it? So when you change one thing, what does it affect something else? And then all of a sudden there's people who were in favor of the change who become against the change because of an impact you didn't think of. But primarily it's because uh, the Republicans control the state Senate and they're not interested in criminal justice reform. So New York State has a $168 billion budget. Mr. O'Donnell, do you think your district is getting a fair share of those resources? Uh, as it relates to education, absolutely not which is why I have been instrumental in fighting for full funding of the CFE decision. Uh, we have not yet completed that. I think that we need to have uh, a, a governor and a state legislature that is willing to say that we need to continue uh, to restore the funding that th the court ordered us to have. Um, as it relates to other things, I said it's not more specific than, than that, but with education, the answer is absolutely no. Okay. Mr. Vargas, what would you do differently with those resources? Um, positions you've held that give you the experience to deal with a budget of this size? Well, um, one of the things that I would like to do is to allocate more money to education, bring more money to education on the sense of, of fighting bullying. And then the other thing that I like to do is... Well, how uh, would you do that? Well, the, it's, bullying is a serious problem in school. It's an, it's, it's, right now it's a city issue, but it's a serious problem in school that but, but how would you bring more money? Well, to by it? fighting up there with my colleague and, and, and also uh, finding a common ground with my colleagues so we could help each other so to pass, to, uh, to achieve the, the, the purpose that we have in, in bringing more money to our uh, uh, district, uh, uh, the fresh air to our district. And this is a question for both of you. What do you think was left out of the state budget in this last budget cycle? Uh, the full funding of the CFE. So allowing the, the, the court ordered um, money to go to the lower income uh, places in the state of New York and you know that is the city but it's also other places. There is poverty um, in rural communities where they too have the same problem. And so uh, we can't have an educational system where if you live in a rich neighborhood your child gets a fabulous education and if you live in a not so rich neighborhood they don't. That's what CFE was about. That was the biggest thing lacking in this year's budget. Now, isn't that something that's been going on for decades? It's been going on since I got there, that's correct. Robert Jackson led the fight for the CFE lawsuit. The Court of Appeals ruled that the state constitution requires the state to provide uh, equal funding, and we have not yet achieved that. We've gotten closer, we've moved in the right direction, but we haven't achieved it. So what are you hearing on the ground from the people of District 69? Um, what are the, some of the major issues facing the district? Um, in each of your opinions, what are the top three issues? Mr. Vargas? It's rent, tenants problems. It's in, um, unbelievable the way the rent has been is, uh, increased in the, in the people. How hopeless people feel with the problem of rent. People feel that they, they're going to disappear, that they don't want people have been living for a long time with the with the eminent domain issue on Columbia University and the friendship with the elected officials on Columbia University. 
and um, and no not just the, the the rent. How this happened is that they want to take everybody out of Manhattan, especially up the Upper West Side and the Manhattan. And the, uh, it's a problem. That's, just, that's the most con serious problem that happened is the lack of affordability, rent of affordable uh, housing. And in, how would you address that? I uh, definitely would be one of my issues. Well, bringing it out of the, uh, uh, bringing more resources, speaking more to the people, my colleagues. So what, what specifically? Uh, definitely is bringing resources to fight to fight the issues because everything is, is in, include money and to to bring legislation that will stop the rent for the the and make the rent really truly affordable for people. Uh, there are people, uh, young people, graduated from college with job, but they're still living in their houses. They cannot get out of their house because there's no place to live. They have to stay in the same place. Even you could see 25 years, even graduated from college with master's degree, but they they have to stay in the place because they no no way, no place to uh, to rent a new apartment in another place. Mr. Donald, same question. What are the major issues facing the district, in your opinion? Uh, well, the first one I would raise is transportation, specifically buses and subways. Um, what is the solution? The solution is money. I have a bill in the assembly currently that would provide a millionaire's tax. Uh, that would provide the MTA enough money uh, to provide first-class transportation. You can't live in a city if you can't get around. And with our elderly aging population, many of them rely on those buses. So we need to make sure that they're running on time and consistently. I agree with Mr. Vargas about um, housing. Uh, one, we have to get rid of vacancy decontrol, which is a way in which people get have a uh, rent-stabilized apartment go to market rent, which makes it impossible for the people from the community to live in. And the other part of that is creating affordable housing and, and addressing the problem in NYCHA. NYCHA exists, the very important housing for many people throughout the city. Uh, the, the roofs are leaking, the elevators are broken. We have to commit to the resources to get uh, the public housing stock to be uh, in better condition and safe for the people who live there. All right, thank you. Now, current New York state law does not adequately protect a woman's right to access to safe and legal abortions. Our only protection comes from the U.S. Supreme Court decision that Donald Trump, Mike Pence, and the GOP have vowed to overturn. This puts our fundamental reproductive rights at risk. Um, fact, the state assembly passed a bill to fix this. It's called the Reproductive Health Act. RHA, and it would write into New York state law a woman's right to access abortion, that it's consistent with Roe v. Wade. Uh, Mr. O'Donnell, did you support the Reproductive Health Act? Uh, absolutely. My mother was pro-choice pre-Roe v. Wade, and she was an Irish Catholic woman with five children. Um, uh, my life, I've always been committed uh, to a woman's right to control her own body. Um, there's an intellectual consistency with the gay rights movement and the women's movement about control of your own bodies, and I will do everything in my power uh, to ensure that the woman continues to have that right, which is why I'm very proud to have the endorsement of Planned Parenthood in my race for re-election. Mr. Vargas, what is your position on the New York Reproductive Health Act? I'm not totally in, in agreement with, with it. I mean, I agree that I, I will fight for it. But for female, for women to have their the right to make a decision with their with their body, but I also concerned in 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 making that happen willfully and intentionally and grossly negligently. Uh, I like to people to take care, the enjoy life, have fun out there, but be careful and and don't 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 be also be concerned that uh, uh, that. Something, something else is happening. Now, when Joseph, the female, I would support all women. I have two daughters. I support them to do anything they want when anything happened today. And then, but uh, I also concern that that we be be be, be careful. Uh, I'm not sure I understand your answer. Would you have supported? Would you have voted for the Reproductive Health Act? Uh, yes. All right. Thank you. Um, now let's. Uh, that attachment that I mentioned before. But what 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 is that, codicil? Well, that I don't like to people to be concerned that 
the, it's not just that, that the, the person had the right to, to do what they want to do with their body, but also a right to protect their body also. If, the, it not necess, if it's not necessary to put the body through that, uh, so would be, you, don't be grossly would you negligent, want a different enjoy type of life, and be careful. Would you want a different type of sex education in schools? Uh, I think that there is, uh, uh, that does have to be different, that has to be improved, I would say, in the sense of, yes, you have, you, we support you, you have all sports that do which thing with your body, but be also uh, aware that it's not new because when the, when the female, they wouldn't go through all these, uh, some kind of negative effect up to her own body is, may have some impact. So to be careful with own health. So it's much better if, if protected or prevented from happening to not to have a, an, an unwanted or unwished member to come into the family. Be careful also. That's what I want, to be educating to that thing. All right, matter. thank you. All right, let's move towards another subject, uh, marijuana. Um, the move towards a legalization of marijuana would put New York among the growing number of states to legalize the drug, um, including California, Colorado, and Washington. Currently, medical marijuana is legal in New York for only a handful of serious ailments and conditions. Mr. Vargas, where do you stand on the legalization of marijuana on any level? I, I do not. And I repeat, I do not support the legalization of marijuana because it, it hurts society. It hurts the people. We will lose a, a middle, middle class student of generations if we put it, this into to our students. It will be the one more element to bullying the students in school. If they don't do marijuana, the other, the other one will be bullying in, in, in the school. I don't think it's a good thing for society. I do oppose energetically, uh, actively, and I, I do not agree with the legalization of marijuana or any kind of drug. On, on any level? On any level. I do not medical? agree with, because it's, you prevent, you provide a bridge to worst thing to happening. Right, so Look so, at the people. Look around. Uh, okay, when you walk on Broadway, how many people you see that they are? They started one day with different themes. Some people have the ability to, to stop that at a point, but all the, the poor people, they don't have the ability okay, to, so, to stop. So prescribing opioids is okay, but marijuana for the... No drugs are okay. To, I do not support any type of drug. Other than I, I barely support what the medication is. I'm a, I want the natural health on the people. Okay, Mr. I, Mr. O'Donnell, you've been a leader in the push to legalize marijuana for the use in treating opioid addictions, um, and you have some critics for that as well. Can you talk about that? Um, sure. Uh, we have an opioid crisis in our country, and uh, it has developed um, fr primarily from people being given prescriptions by a doctor for pain, and then they get addicted. And then um, they're addicted, the addiction is a horrible addiction. And so uh, medical marijuana could be used to assist those people. The symptoms of withdrawal from opioids are the same symptoms of getting treated for chemotherapy, which is how we originally started using medical marijuana. If I had a child or a niece or a nephew who was addicted to opioids, I would much prefer them to try to see if medical marijuana would work for them before giving them methadone, which is just another opioid. Um, I think that the science has moved significantly forward to the days when people believed that marijuana was an entry drug into addiction, when in fact now there is evidence that it can be an exit drug from addiction. And we have to stay with the current times and provide the people who are treating people with opioid addiction with as many tools as they can in their toolbox to help them. Okay, thank you. Um, now going back to uh, rents, but to small businesses, um, as in most neighborhoods in Manhattan, you can't help but see all the storefronts that are closed up um, on the Upper West Side. Um, how would you suggest or plan to attract and keep local business owners? Mr. I, I definitely, uh, it is time to bring commercial rent control. Uh, it has been said, it has been utilized many times. 
Like, uh, for example, every time Robert Jackson had an election, he was talking about his supporting commercial rent control, but he never did it. He only did it when he was had an election. That, that's not good. Uh, it is time to have rent control, a uh, commercial rent control. Uh, the, the small businesses is the backbone of our economy, the national economy. And we're destroying small businesses without commercial rent control. I'm, I, I'm so sad when I see like the corner of 113 and uh, Broadway, it's a very carry that I used, there was a long time there. It's closing because the, the owner suddenly bring the rent control. Uh, they, they bring the rent to the every price. Landlords are looking at businesses. They're watching. If the business is prospering, then the next lease is going go to go to 100,000 the, to the sky. So forcing the people to become a, a, a form of slavery, working hard, night, uh, it's, it's 16 hours a day, all every day of the week, and just to pay rent. Mr. O'Donnell? Um, I agree uh, with Mr. Vargas about that. Uh, I have a couple of bills in Albany that would address the question of commercial rents. Um, commercial rent control is an excellent idea. Mr. Jackson uh, was a city council member, had no power to do that. The power is in Albany. Uh, if he becomes a state senator, he, perhaps he and I could work on that very issue. Um, the issues are complicated, though, because uh, many, many uh, Tenant, commercial tenant has come to my office and we've interceded and tried to negotiate with their landlord to allow them to stay. Um, part of the problem is the changing nature of retail. You know, Amazon has changed the way people live their lives. They don't want to go to a, a store and carry home a box of toilet paper or paper towels. They just want to click and get it delivered to their house. So um, there are two different kinds, the for-profit landlords, which is one problem, and then there are the institutional landlords, which we have, Mr. Vargas mentioned, Columbia University. And I've pushed very hard to get them to fill their vacancies. They just filled a vacancy that had been vacant for years in Ricky's. And I think that the vacant storefronts are a plight on the neighborhood, which a university has an obligation to participate in fixing. Is there any way to penalize landlords that leave storefronts vacant? The problem is it is viewed as a taking under the U.S. Constitution. And so uh, that's the problem. We've looked at it. We've tried. Um, but to, to penalize them for not using what is theirs from the government would require due process. And it, it's a problem. All right. Thank you. Um, Mr. O'Donnell, are you for or against the closing of Rikers Island and moving the inmate population to the borough-based facilities, and is 10 years too long? Um, I was a public defender in Brooklyn from 1987 to 1995. I spent many hours on Rikers Island. I have been the chair of the Corrections Committee for four years, where I toured Rikers Island. Um, Rikers Island is a problem. Um, it's a problem for a variety of reasons. One of the greatest reasons it's a problem is that it's far away from where the courts actually are. So it is not wise to put somebody on a bus at 8 a.m. and drive them all the way to Queens or to Brooklyn to go to court. That's not a, an efficient use of resources. Um, additionally, it's not safe, and it's not safe for the, uh, for the guards or the officers, and it's not safe for the people who are there. Please remember, 90% of the people on Rikers Island are pretrial detainees. They have not been convicted of anything. So yes, I do believe Rikers Island should be closed. Yes, I believe that people should be housed closer to their families and to the courts where they're going to go. And I think it should be done quicker than 10 years. Mr. Vargas, same question. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to have the, the Rikers Island facility in my, in my district. I don't know if, my, if the, the honorable assembly member would. Uh, before I decide to, to get it, to take it out of what it is, I, will, I have to think of the solution of the problem. I don't want to have it in my district, so I guess somebody else wouldn't, have, wouldn't like to have it in, in his district. Uh, I, I think we should improve what it is. Uh, it's, a, it's a matter of, we've we got to look at this. How many people escape from that? Not that many. That's, that's what I think. I don't want to make it easier for, for someone who has been decided by the law, under the law, they had to, to be there and make it easier for them to, to escape or you know, to leave. That's not what I'm looking for. And I don't want them to be in, in, in my district also. So I think what we should do is to work better, to improve where it is, 
and make a better condition for everyone, and, but, but where it is. All right. And this is our last question. I know this is a very large issue in, um, in your district. Um, senior citizens. Um, the senior citizen population in New York City is growing. How would you plan on supporting the needs of the growing number of seniors in your district? Mr. O'Donnell. Uh, thank you. That is a very important question. Uh, we now have what are called NORCs, which stands for Naturally Occurring Retirement Communities. And what they were were buildings that were built in the 60s and 70s, and the people who moved into them have never left. And so now what you have is a facility filled with an aging population, and they need services. So uh, I provide services. I've, uh, when I got capital money, I gave capital money to the Morningside Gardens, which to, for their retirement center. And what they do there is really just God's work. They work to ensure that the people who live there get to stay there and not have to be moved out. And so we need to do more of that. And back to the previous question, we need to understand their needs, which are different. Most elderly people will not get on a subway. They just won't. And so we need to ensure that the transportation is available, buses, for them to get around the city and to live their lives as for as long as they can with mobility and independence. Mr. Vargas? I think we should look into SCRI, the Senior Rent Increase Control. I, the, I think right on the 50,000 maximum, we should double that and also uh, we, we should increase, uh, give them the chance to, to live in their own place rather than being in, in a nursing home. Um, I think we should be a little bit more concerned about the home attendance, the people who come um, and help them, and, uh, and provide the ability that a close uh, relative be, be able to be with them and be also uh, pay for being with them uh, in, when, uh, when it comes to taking care of the senior citizen and also make sure of the safety, their security. Uh, but my, my main concern is, is, uh, is uh, SCREE to, to, to better that situation. And uh, the bicycle, that, which is a very, that's the way it, they've been terrorizing the bicycles, terrorizing the senior citizen. Uh, going into on the sidewalk, we got to uh, uh, enforce the law with, with the bicycle, not going into the, into the, in the sidewalk. And that's my about senior citizen. Well, thank you both very much. Uh, we're now going to have closing statements. We'll start with you, Mr. Vargas. I'm Ruben Dario Vargas. I have run for office unelectively for more than 20 years consecutive. Since 1996, I have run for Congress, uh, City Council, State Assembly, Board of Presidents. I've never been elected, but I have always won because winning to me is achieving an objective. An objective that which is mean to bring about issues that would never be brought to, like renewable marriage. It is time to better the society, to foresee what we're living right now. The average marriage in the state of New York is, is, is very low. There, but I think my renewable marriage is the issue that I'm bringing about, it, which is a marriage that will expire in 10 years. 10 years marriage will be renewed and like it, no, just like, not meaning the driver's license, but it'll be renewed. As people want to continue being married, the people will marry again and they go to another honeymoon. And that's one of the things. The other issue that I want to bring about is the, the legalized government control sexual therapist. And that will help us to, uh, it, sex is a need for all people, for all genders. And that's one of the things that I want to bring, ring the bell and bring that about. It is time to legalize uh, physical sexual therapy for all genders, that all gender, all single person that had no partner will be able to go to this place regulated by the government and have to take care of the other sex, physical sexual therapies. Thank you, Mr. Vargas. Mr. O'Donnell. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vargas, for joining me. Thank you for having us for this very important opportunity to, to talk to our voters. I'm very proud to have been the first openly gay man elected to the New York State Assembly. I'm proud of the work that I've done there, but I'm also proud of the work I've done in my community, fighting for 
parks, fighting for historic districts, fighting for the preservation of housing. All those things are very, very important. When I got to Albany, they said I was too bold and too loud and too pushy and too aggressive. In the, in the end, that's what you need in an elected official, somebody who's independent, not bought, and does what he or she thinks is right. I believe in the 16 years that I've served, I've proven that's who I am, and I'd like to continue doing the work that I do. Thank you very much. I want to thank all the candidates for participating in today's debate, and thank you for watching. Please remember to vote. A closed primary election will be held on Thursday, September 13th, and the general election will be held on Tuesday, November 8th. For more information on voting, locating your poll site, and all the candidates, you can visit our website, racetorepresent.com, or the League of Women Voters website, lwvny.org. Thank you for watching Race to Represent on Manhattan Neighborhood Networks. Goodbye.